Good morning and welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Stings Pavilion, European Stings Pavilion. Uh, this is always Carlo Motta reporting for the European Sting, live from the EBS European Business Summit 2014. I'm very pleased to welcome uh, with us Mr. Marian Constantin Basile, which is president of the uh, Assembly of European Regions Committee on Economy and Regional Development. Um, Mr. Vasile, um, President Bozatli gave us a, an insightful um, introduction on the Assembly of European Regions and its activity. Would you like to tell us uh, more about your committee and so your role in the economical and mm, development of European regions? Firstly, I would like to thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, glad to be here because it's uh, an important event connected directly to my committee in the AR. And uh, if you want to tell you uh, some words about my committee, I can tell you that we have four work groups which work very well. One is for investment, business and SMEs. The second one is for transportation. Another one for rural development. And the last one is for energy and uh, climate change. And, uh, of course, we are dealing with uh, very pragmatic topics. For, for example, <coughs> entrepreneurship. We want to create, in the near future, a position paper which we will submit to towards the in uh, European institutions. And it is very important for what Europe is going to do in this sense, to encourage entrepreneurship. And uh, here, I can tell you that AR is a political organization is the biggest association in uh, uh, Europe and uh, we want to have a bottom-up approach with the perception and the perspective of the regions and uh, here as public authorities we want to encourage uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurship in the sense that a new culture should be developed for example the attitude towards failure should be changed also, we should encourage a new educational system and a lifelong learning. Uh, we should uh, create business infrastructure like <coughs> incubators, uh, industrial parks, support also the clustering of all the entities. For example, it is very important for us, the public authorities, to cooperate with the universities, with NGOs, but also with the private sector, with the SMEs. And, uh, it is crucial to have short communication channels with the uh, business medium, uh, business environment, and also offer the financial instruments necessary for them to develop. And here we lobby for the creation of a regional investment fund for each region. This is very important because this is uh, something very pragmatic. Um, uh, last but not least, we should provide also some means to develop brands. Brands are very important for the uh, companies, for the regions, but also for EU. You can do very, uh, very important things by using brands. Thank you for this. This was very interesting. Um, one more thing about the role that the region should play. Uh, do you think that um, so? Having a defragmented economy, a very um, local economy in each region is the key role, is the key function that regions should play in order to um, overtake the crisis. Yes, I think this is very important because we should help, firstly, the SMEs, which could be smaller or larger, because the multinational companies have sufficient funds for them to uh, develop, operate, and so on, even do research. But the SMEs do not have sufficient support, and therefore we should be there for them. And uh, this could be done with regional and local policies. I told you about instruments, uh, short communication channels, business infrastructure, and so on. We could offer this infrastructure <coughs> for them to develop. And also, we should uh, help the young people to become entrepreneurs. This is a very important topic. And uh, also, for, from the local perspective, I can tell you that we should have some measurements, concrete measurements of each region or local entity, and the funds should be allocated according to the measurements, because this way 
we could have a sustainable sustainable development of the entire Europe. Thank you. Um, so, is a globalized economic system still winning for the Western countries, and particularly for the EU in our case, in an economic situation which has radically changed in the last 10 years, let's say, or as you said, is a local sustainable economy the key for future development and how exactly? It is a tricky and sensitive question. I think that uh, indeed the globalization uh, made some concrete effects that we, we have to consider, we have to adapt. Some emerging, emerging economies are there and they compete with the aging economies and therefore we have to innovate a lot. So practically uh, our products and services all over Europe have, have to be um, uh, have to be uh, improved in an innovative way and here we should support with the local authorities this thing because if we innovate and if we use the young uh, workforce then we can be competitive over the global market this is very important and also we should be clever and also wise in EU to find the ways and the uh, relationships among the uh, institutions. This is also very important. A dialogue is very uh, needed and we should cooperate uh, with the universities, as I said, associations, for example, Pedaren Association for Energy Management and uh, also with the NGOs which could help us promoting some things and, uh, for example, um, implementing brands and everything is uh, integrated and should be integrated. Also the digital agenda is very important. I mentioned about energy, transportation system is something very, very uh, important. So I think uh, to resume and uh, sum up what I said, um, we as EU should have an integrated approach. We should better cooperate, have a vision and uh, the political will, will of all governments in order to, to implement some priorities for EU and then become competitive on the global market. That was very interesting. This was also our last question for the AER. So I thank again Mr. Vasile for being with us today and I wish you a good day at the EBS. Thank you. Thank you.